Greetings, my naughty little mosh pit, and did you know I like pro wrestling? Pro wrestling is kind of something I've gotten really into over the last few years, mainly thanks to the WWE, but I think the general concept of it is really cool. It's one half an actual physical sport, and the other half theatrics, leading to a lot of cool characters and personas to be put into the ring. Of course, with a concept like that, licensed games based on the likes of the WWE would be a regular thing and still get made to this day with the likes of WWE 2K24. Even newer labels like AEW have gotten a chance at their own video game. But despite that, it's odd that there aren't a lot of video game original wrestling games. Sure, we've gotten recent stuff like the indie RPG WrestleQuest and even older, smaller examples like characters such as King from Tekken or Armika from Street Fighter. But wrestling stuff originating from games is very few and far between. Somehow. However, what if I told you that not only was there a PS2 wrestling game that had exactly this, but was also developed by the developers of the WWE games both before and after its release? What if I also told you that said game was also incredibly horny and featured an all-woman cast of characters with 2000s era PS2 game dubbing mixed with the same level of cheesy over-the-top plot lines for its story as actual pro wrestling. See, now you're closing your other tab and turned back because I got you interested, huh? Enough setup. Let me take y'all back to 2004 and show you Yuke's forgotten horny wrestling game, Rumble Roses. You won't get too far. You won't like me when I'm angry. You'll be seeing stars and all of the other constellations. If it's something to live for, it's something to die for. At least that's the way that I look at it. If you can't live without that, then you're not about that. You would jump right in front of a bus. You say. Take me first, take me first This is the shy Won't get hurt, won't get hurt Rumble Roses is a video game developed by Hughes, who, as mentioned earlier before the montage intro, had a history of developing WWE games prior to Rumble Roses, and in fact, continued to do so after it up until WWE 2K19, which would be the last game of the WWE brand. Interestingly enough, Rumble Roses uses the same engine as WWE SmackDown, Here Comes the Pain, which was released in 2003, a year prior to Rumble Roses. Unlike SmackDown, Rumble Roses is more famously horny than its officially licensed counterpart. What's that? How do you get such a nice rap? It's no secret to anyone that this game is very sexually charged. The majority of its roster consists of female wrestlers in sexy outfits, and it features a variety of things that you won't find in a typical wrestling game. I mean, for fuck's sakes, there's a mud wrestling game mode and Okay, yeah, that's really hot to me, I won't lie. <clears throat> Regardless, in spite of the game wearing its sexuality on its sleeve, I feel like most would see this game as nothing but its horny aspects. However, it's clear to me this game was more than just a booby game in the eyes of its development team. Because this isn't a licensed title or anything, we needed to create some originality into the characters. So we put some emphasis on the background story of the characters so that they have their own personalities with them we decided to make the background stories quite serious. Otherwise, what you see on screen is just pure sexy and not serious, so we think it balances this out as well. Despite this clear care for the product, upon release, several outlets reviewed the game with very average to middling reviews. A lot of these outlets just saw the game as a corny game for people to play one-handed without giving it much time or thought. Even today, most videos on the game are either clip compilations of the sexy stuff or people playing it as a joke. And I don't want to come off like I'm saying there's anything wrong with content like that. It's harmless, and it's not like any of these people are talking down to the game as far as I can tell. But it's more so that I wanted to look into this game from a place nobody else seems to be. The game has a simple setup. Each wrestler in the roster takes part in a tournament for one reason or another. Like how Candy Kane wants to save her childhood orphanage, or how Dixie Clements wants to follow in the footsteps of her idol, Kamikaze Rose. However, 
Each girl will end up running into the game's main villain of sorts, Anesthesia. As someone on Backlog once said, there's a plotline about a lesbian nurse brainwashing wrestlers and making war crime robots out of those wrestlers, and she's being hunted down by a dominatrix of amnesia, which is surprisingly an accurate description. I can see now why Hideo Kojima let them put Metal Gear Solid stuff into this game and its sequel. This is exactly the kind of thing he'd approve of writing-wise. Now, y'all know me. I'm a gameplay-first kind of gal, and you're probably wondering what I think of said gameplay. Well, I think it's fun. The game is a Yuke's wrestling game, so it's got a good pick-up-and-play system in its core gameplay. Basically, you pick whichever girl you want to play, and then fight an opponent till you either pin them down, cause them to submit, or the unique mechanic of this game where you KO your opponent via an HKO, which stands for Humiliation Knockout. Basically, if you fill up this heart gauge on your enemy's side, you can then use L2 to perform a humiliation move on your opponent. It's a very easy system to get used to. The thing that took me the longest was learning how to exit and re-enter the ring, which is circle by the way. It's a very simple game when you look at it from its basics. None of the characters are stronger or faster than the others, and their moveset differences come down to their special moves, grabs, and other things of that nature, as the basic attacks are basically the same between all playable ladies. Speaking of the ladies, the game has a large variety of characters to play, both the canon personas of the cast, but uniquely to this game, you can unlock AU personas of the characters. Basically, all of them is their opposing alignment, so you get heel versions of the faces and face versions of the heels. For example, beating Candy Cane's story unlocks Becky, who is what would happen if Becky Welsh was a face instead of her canon heel alignment. Granted, I think most of the canon default characters are better than their unlockable AU counterparts. However, I do like this feature. It's not out of the norm in real life pro wrestling for characters to switch alignments during a storyline, so in a way, this feels like a way to pay tribute. But I'll dive more into this game's love for the medium later on. It's part of my thesis, so don't fret about it. Now, let's move along before y'all get bored. Jingle, jingle, jingle! Something that I do want to point out, because I know some of you might be wondering it, is that the youngest any character in this game is canonically is 18 or 19. Unlike something like Sinner and Kagura, every girl in Rumble Roses is an adult. Even characters like Agile or Makoto are of age. Granted, this fact shouldn't be worth pointing out because any game with this much horny shit in it SHOULD only feature adult age characters, but unfortunately that isn't always the case, so I felt like bringing it up here. Save y'all that Wikipedia search. Interesting thing to note is that my second favorite character, Dixie Clements, canonically has her birthday on March 28th, which is also my birthday, so that's neat. In terms of stage variety, there isn't really any. You get like free rings to fight in, counting the secret beach one, which also has unique beach based entrances as this stage is clearly meant to be played using the bikini costumes the girls all have, because of course they do. However, you can play this stage with the regular wrestling outfits. It does make the special beach entrance look a little silly though. The bikinis are also used in the mud wrestling mode, which is basically just a game mode that's the same as standard matches, except it's in a pool of mud and the girls' models get covered in the mud because uh, of course they do. Like I said, the game's sexuality is worn very proudly on its sleeve, and while some lesser people might see that as obnoxious, I see it as perfectly fine, because I'm not a lame-o shonen head on Twitter who pretends like a piece of media being overly sexual devalues it out the gate, when in reality, something being sexy doesn't affect its quality or ability to be engaging or thought-provoking. I think people online are way too quick to assume something is shallow if it happens to lean into its horniness a bit too much. But in reality, a game like Rumble Roses can feature all the mud wrestling, boob jokes, tickle sticks, and general horniness it wants because something being sexy doesn't undermine its other aspects at all. And to judge it like it does is narrow-minded. It says more about the detractor than it does the media itself. Look at the detractors of media like Has Been Hotel or Fairy Tale, two pieces of media I personally really enjoy and respect that regularly get made fun of by their detractors for being juvenile or gooner bait, as if anyone who actually touches grass wouldn't instantly think someone is weird for completely writing off a piece of media for daring to have a little titty physics or sex jokes in it, since most people either think that shit is awesome or indifferent to it. Believe it or not, being Professor Reddit 24-7 makes you unfun to be around for most normal people who are actually able to enjoy a good horny moment in their fiction because it's so much fun, Jan! Which does lead into my next major point. Like I said earlier, I think the game is fun. It's a genuinely fun game and I feel like it's exactly the kind of old school game that a group of friends would play at first as a joke, 
But then as the night goes on, get really into it. It just has the game feel of a good time, and I think that kind of game is a lost art, especially in the fighting game scene. Not to say modern fighters aren't fun, they are! I love Street Fighter VI and Guilty Gear Strive, for example, but I feel like fighting game devs are so hyper-focused on being tournament-worthy that sometimes it results in their single-player or casual content falling to the wayside. Take, for example, Virtua Fighter V Ultimate Showdown or Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, games that focus so much on their competitive scenes that their single-player content was basically bare-bones to non-existent. Games are a lot more expensive to make than they were back in 2004, and with so many fighting games, well, fighting for the attention of the masses, they basically have no choice but to pander to the FGC crowd. Heck, I recently learned that part of the reason the FGC types dislike Mortal Kombat is that it's easier to learn compared to the other big fighters, which feels like such a weird reason to hate a game. Not every fighter needs to be this complex, competitive event that takes half a year at least for you to learn the mechanics of. But it really feels like if you aren't that, or even slightly don't meet the expectations of the FGC at large, you're instantly thrown to the wayside by the mainstream FGC audience. A game like Rumble Roses is not going to be picked up for an EVO lineup. It's not going to become some mainstream comp game that you watch people play in a big convention center. But I know there's an audience for the game. A niche audience. The pro wrestling community. Rumble Roses at its core is a game about a wrestling league of exclusively hot girls. But, even deeper at its core, it's a love letter to everything that makes people like me love actual pro wrestling. And it's no surprise Ukes would be the ones to make a game like that. Cheesy dialogue, over-the-top storylines, eccentric stage personas for the girls, this is exactly like real pro wrestling both in 2004 and in current day. Look at the current day lineup of WWE superstars, or the wrestlers of AEW if you're a fan of empty stadiums. You'll see how diverse and insane those wrestlers are, just like the ones in Rumble Roses. Sure, Rumble Roses sprinkles in a dash of anime into the mix of its wrestlers, but my overall point stands. It's so clear to me this game is made by people who love pro wrestling, who understand why it's so appealing to the people who like it. Frankly, while it's a shame that due to Konami owning the series, it will likely never get a new game, I don't think I'd want a new game if Ukes weren't the developers anyway. It's so clear to me that Ukes were the heart of this game, and by the end of playing it, to gather footage for this video, I left a fan. I really enjoyed this game despite it being mostly a good at best bare bones wrestling game because despite being just good mechanically, it becomes much greater by being elevated by its personality. Its characters, its writing, its designs, everything here feels like a horny and heartfelt tribute to everything that makes pro wrestling so much fun to engage with. It's the exact kind of game you want to pop in while smoking weed and drinking diet soda with your homies. Beneath the surface, Rumble Roses is a game made by pro wrestling fans for pro wrestling fans. Even if you're not interested in the sexy women or the mud wrestling mode or any of that stuff, at its core, there's still a passion for the subject at hand. Every story mode credits ends with a special thanks from the developers that only confirms my theory of the developers being incredibly passionate about this game. Thank you for playing Rumble Roses. We really hope you enjoyed our game. While developing Rumble Roses, our goal was to surprise the world with fresh new concepts, coupled with exciting gameplay. We are dedicated to delivering a thoroughly entertaining experience by compressing our knowledge of games and finding the core elements that make games fun. For us, there is nothing better than the feeling of making games with great, innovative gameplay. Let it be known that we hereby promise to do our very best, giving everything we have into game development, always striving towards perfection. We plan to keep you fans captivated with our next project too. I think Rumble Roses is a game worth playing if anything I've said piqued your interest. Physical copies secondhand can range from 30 to 90 price-wise depending, so maybe emulate it if you have to. Only real emulation issue I noticed when playing was that when you use the tickle stick, sometimes the audio would start up its last few seconds after ending once the tickling had ended. A fact I only know about because I am not immune to my horny urges either. But yeah, outside of that, the emulation of the game seems near perfect, so it's not going to hurt you to emulate it if you have no other choice. 
So, if there's anything I can leave this video off on, it's that if you ever see a game or any other kind of media you look at and think, wow, that looks shallow, maybe instead of judging it on its cover alone, actually try it. Maybe instead of assuming Don't Toy With Me Miss Nagataro is some loser incel show, actually watch it and see that it's just a cute comedy about two dipshit kids struggling to express their feelings properly, as teens tend to do. Maybe instead of assuming Fairy Tale is just Horny Wizard One Piece, maybe actually read it and see that underneath all of Mashima's love for bouncing breast technology, it's a found family story featuring a cast of goofy yet powerful magic users. And maybe, instead of seeing Rumble Roses as just the horny wrestling game with a tickle stick, you can play it and see that it, at its core, it's a passionate love letter to pro wrestling. A medium with centuries of history and a large audience of passionate fans who enjoy watching muscular performers knock the shit out of each other. I've been the Girly Wolf Pup, and who else is excited for SummerSlam in August?